Boys and girls, I have been thrilled with your castles. They're beautiful. They have beautiful details. I love them. I think people are really going to enjoy looking at them. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to spend a little bit of time doing what a lot of watercolorists do is to look back at what they painted. And now that the paint is dry to see if there are any extra details to add. If you look at this, you'll see that you could probably tell what colors the person used. For example, on this one, it looks like blue, gray, and yellow orange. This one looks like yellowish for bricks, gray for the sky, aqua for the moat. This one, gray for the bricks, blue for the sky, greenish down there on the bottom. This one, it's cool, but it's brown for the bricks, purple for the moat, purple for the sky. What we're gonna do is I want to challenge you to use more colors today and just to add them. This person never did do their sky. They still have to finish it. But I want you to notice how I'm adding purple, but now I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in there. It's fun to have more colors than one in your sky. Here, this person did an all black sky. Well, what I'm doing now is going back and I'm adding some kind of mysterious looking black clouds. I could also add some purple. Now, in the last two examples, I use black and purple. You don't have to do black and purple. You could do a sunset sky or um, with yellows and oranges. Uh, a lot of people did yellow, red, um, orange, magenta. Some people did blue with different color blues. Um, here's another one where this person did sort of a light colored purple and now I'm just adding a little bit of pink to it. Now here's another thing. A lot of kids have one color green, but if you look at any color, uh, any bushes or whatever, you're going to see that there are lots of different colors of green. Also, I'm adding some texture here. You can see me going line, 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 line doesn't take long and it's going to make it look more advanced. Here, this person had sort of a kind of mousy looking green there in the middle. So I'm just beefing it up, beefing it up with a darker color. Here, same with the moat. This person actually did a good job of using a couple blues. But now that I'm finished, uh, now that it's dry, I can go in and just kind of give it that watery texture where I'm kind of making my brush go wavy, wavy, wavy. And I'm just adding in some more colors of blue to make it look uh, like it's got a little bit more depth, not quite so flat. Now we're used to using a round brush. This red one is what we call a flat brush. Do you see how when I turn it one way it's wide and the other it's skinny? Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it and just by pulling it across, I'm giving the illusion of bricks. Notice I'm not trying to do this as fast as possible. Now this one is sped up a little bit. This one I actually went back and I took the same watercolor um, color that I had used to make the first um, just kind of a wash over my castle. Now I'm using that flat red brush. You'll know it's red for it to be flat. It's green when it's round. Um, and I'm just putting on some bricks. Here, I'm actually using a different color. This person used ochre, and I'm using a different color of brick, and I'm just pulling it across. You can go over the rectangles that you did last week, or you just let the rectangles be on their own, and you fill in this um, little brick thing um, around those. So notice that it's just a easy, you set it down and you pull. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually adding a shadow. If you kind of in your mind think to yourself, every line that I drew, I'm going to put a shadow underneath it. That's a good rule of thumb. I'm making the shadows underneath those windows. I'm making a shadow up um, underneath my crenellations. I'm putting a shadow underneath that little uh, ridge of bricks above my window there. This is another easy thing to do while you're working. I'm putting it under my line. Here I'm going under my windowsill. That's just going to make it look like the sun is shining down and there's a shadow underneath. Here I'm putting it under the line there. I'm putting it under my crenellation. I'm putting it underneath each one of my towers. 
And if I were to show you before and after of this, you're gonna see that my castle now looks more 3D. It doesn't look so flat anymore. It's a really easy trick. Just go under each line and you're gonna have it. Now, um, you're gonna see me do this with the next one. And like I said, um, it just depends on how many colors you wanna use. You can use your personal watercolor set or if you feel like moving and having more options, then you can always go over to the table and to get the colors that we used last week or to use one of the landscaping palettes or to use one of the every color in the universe palettes, whatever floats your boat. Some of you put on these roof lines, they do not have to be the same color as everything else. Boring, go ahead and choose a color. It could even be vibrant and go ahead and color that in so that it stands out and doesn't blend in with the background. The other thing that I'm about to show you is that some of you who really wanted to have um, a strong color of white, um, I could give that to you. So if you wanna add in some clouds, I can give you some white tempera paint. You can also color in your windows and you can also make a moon. Now, some of you have this issue that if you're working on one thing and then you go and try and color right near it. So I had just covered, colored this roof and then I go and put in yellow. This is called bleeding where the one goes into the other and everyone freaks out. Not to worry, just take a little paper towel you're going, or Kleenex or whatever, you're just gonna place it down on top and go dab. And when you lift up, no biggie, it's gone. And then you can go back and paint. Have fun.